How much money do you make every day doing this? For what? Camera is light. The money. Where's the money? You play with your mind ever since you opened your eyes. Don't you know you're hypnotizing to see what they want you to see? Do you know who you really are? What you want? What you even do in here this time? Please. So we left Chef Shuen behind and drove through the Rift Mountains, famous for being the marijuana capital of Morocco. We made a quick stop for food, and as we did, the police pulled over to check we weren't being yeah, hassled no, it's by okay, the locals. No problem. No problem. Oh, good, we then you. had a rather <laughs> unusual see. dining experience, as we couldn't work out if we were in a restaurant or a butcher's shop. What do you think? It's not so. I think it's all done by fingers, sweetie. <laughs> yeah. Is that fully cooked, do you think? What the hell? Looks it. No luxuries for us this evening as we spent the night sleeping in a petrol station. After our overnight stay in a fuel station forecourt, where the guys there did a fantastic job cleaning our van, we took to the road again en route to the small city of Azru, only to be pulled over a short while later by the police. First pullover. Yes. English. English. Passport. Passport. Papers. Yeah, papers. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Listen. Listen. You have enough hearts on speed. Camera is light. Uh, no, no camera. You press a button and it no comes light, on. No lights. No lights. No lights. But in the six C, you have seventy-five. I want to see a metal one. The money. The money. Yes. Can I have a receipt? Yes. yes, I'll give you the money when I get yes. a receipt. Yeah. 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 Nationality. Nationality. Wait. Ah, UK. I didn't think we were going fast. It was a 60. Huh? Okay. Where's the money? And the lady. She has the money. Yeah, to help her. All right, I'm going to have to pay 150 dirhams here. It's 12 quid, is it? Okay. Okay. Bon voyage. Bon voyage, thank you. How much money do you make every day doing this? For what? How many uh, people do you catch? How many do you want to catch? The park site? Three. About 300. 300 yes. Anyway. After our generous donation to the Moroccan police coffers, we headed to the town of Azru, which is located in the middle Atlas Mountains at an altitude of 1250 metres and surrounded by evergreen home oak and cedar trees. The campsite in the mountains was at one with nature, nestled within a cherry tree orchard. However, Steve and I didn't quite expect what we were to be confronted with the very next morning. Okay, it's the first morning in the mountains. It's cold and Sue's woke up really grumpy. I didn't wake up grumpy, you turned the lights on without telling me. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> Fucker. Look what we've woken up to. It's snowy here in the mountains. Uh, we, came to, we came to escape the British winter. So I thought, yeah, let's go to Morocco. Let's go to the Sahara Desert. And this is what we get. Yes, we are in the mountains, we're in the middle Atlas Mountains. Just past a place called Ifrain, we're in a place called Azru. Apparently there's a market on today which is supposed to be quite um, spectacular and authentic. So we're going to see if we can get there, see if it's still on. I think these are pretty hardy people so I can't see it being cancelled just for a bit of snow. I mean these people live up in the weather. Should I turn the heater on now? Heater on and light off, please. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this at all. <laughs> it's coming through the window. <laughs> Are you warm enough? I am with this on, yeah. <laughs> My dressing girl, my mum's dressing girl, <laughs> my slippers. The town is the foundation of regional trade and social life. Locals in mountain villages nearby 
make use of the bustling market as their weekly source of food, supplies and gossip. This weekly souk draws thousands of people and there is a wide variety of produce available all year round. It's cold. It's cold. We've just made it to the market. <laughs> We've not managed to cross the road yet though. Do I look like an authentic local? Of course oh, absolutely you do. nothing like it. Apart from the fact that your face is a lot whiter. It's a bit crazy. Just saying. Got some more bananas. Yeah. Is it crazy? Don't lose me for God's sake. Imagine trying to drive your car through the market. Look. This is where we need our festival wellies. Yeah, I just want to show you. It's gloopy. That's what that's what we're going through. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and uh, to garlic. So that cost about 50p. But I still think we'd get the garlic because it's a different place, which I thought it was the same place. So. Um, three? 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 I think that was about 5p. Okay. <laughs> Just look at this store behind us. <laughs> Everything's like blowing up and down. It's the, they're dancing. <laughs> Look. <laughs> in the wind. Oh, let's get back in the yeah. van. It's only there. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Um, we're just about to leave. Camping amazing. But yeah, it's not snowing today, which is also good. It's cold still, but the, the sky is blue. We're so. going over the Mid Atlas Mountains, yeah. Middle Atlas Mountains, and then we will probably camp up somewhere near the foothills of the High Atlas Mountains. After leaving our tranquil campsite behind and passing over the Middle Atlas Mountains, it wasn't long before we caught sight of the formidable snow-capped High Atlas Mountains in the distance as we headed for our next camp in the town of Medelt. On arrival, we noticed two huge overland vehicles whose occupants we would get to know and share the next leg of our journey with to the Sahara Desert. <laughs> that was a bit of a rush, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, we need to. We're on a municipal car park, and we need to get off before twelve, or they're going to charge us. And it's one eleven fifty nine. One minute to twelve, so it was so a bit of a rush. <laughs> we're in Medelt, which is at the foothills of the High Atlas Mountains. You'll have seen the video yesterday as we approached. Now we're going to enter the mountains. We are. So looking yes. forward to that. I just, I just want it to get a little bit warmer. That's all. Yeah. Just a little bit warmer. That'd so nice. we've got one more stop at a place called Erishida. That's where we're headed for now. And that should, I think, be in the High Atlas Mountains. And then the very next day, we will be in the Sahara Desert. Yes! <laughs> at last. Yay! Right. Right, let's go. Get, scoot, get, yeah, it's because the man will come, he'll come running out and he'll try want and charge us. Off us so. He's already tried to charge us for the desert experience because he knows a man in the place where we're going, he said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do it. We managed to leave the municipal campsite without being charged for an extra day and it wasn't long before the High Atlas Mountains were again in sight. This magnificent range rises in the west at the Atlantic Ocean and stretches in an eastern direction to the Moroccan-Algerian border. The highest peak is Jebel Toubkal at 4,167 metres. Yeah, right in the plateaus in the middle of the mountains, about an hour from where we're due to go El Rashida. So you come up, this is the lower part of the High Atlas Mountains, so it's been quite an easy pass to get through. But these, it's massive plateaus, and you'll, you'll, you'll have seen it from the videos, and we wanted to stop and have something to eat, where we've got these beautiful mountain views. This salad looks absolutely You need amazing. something, you ask. Here they have, uh, sorry. Um, uh, mayonnaise, yep, and sauce, and pepper, and salt. And come, Fantastic. Come. Come in. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. So here's the thing, guys. Because there's so many um, scammers around, you don't know if people are trying to be very helpful to you, or indeed they're trying to scam you. So that's the kind of that that's the minefield that we 
that I feel that we're treading. This is camel from palm, palm tree. Yeah, this is quartz. Yeah, this is ammonites. Who's selling ammonite? Yeah, this is it's not expensive. This animal, good price. This is 150 dirhams. Camel from palm tree. It's 150. Yeah, yeah. 50 for okay. good no room. Good Only price, 150. It's too much? Yeah. How much is this price, price for you? Okay, this is good price, 100. Okay. 100? Okay, for you means 100, good price. Not for us, no thank you. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. You too. These mountains are inhabited by Berbers who live from agriculture and pastoralism in the valleys. In the step zone of the high atlas where rainfall is low, the locals created a smart technique in managing the low precipitations and the weak soil. They turned the rather semi-arid lands into fertile valleys. This technique has intrigued many Western agriculturists in which they were impressed by the high efficiency of this agricultural system. Many scientists make yearly expeditions to observe the community and their living system. So we are on the move again. We're in a place called Ur Rashida. So we just stayed here one night. Next stop, guys, Sahara Desert. You might be able to see the high Atlas Mountains in the background behind these massive big overlander trucks. We're gonna, we've had a word with these guys and they're gonna meet us in the next campsite that we go in and we're gonna get a tour of the vans so we'll bring that to you. So that's something to look forward to. And I'm looking forward to a swimming pool because apparently there is one that's open. Yeah, so what, have we got two hours? Two, just over two hours, just yeah. Just over well, two hours and we should be, um, we're going to a place called Medoza. Something like that, yeah. And, and Erg Chebi. These yeah. are like the desert areas, the Sahara Desert. Yeah, the campsite's called Haven La Chance, apparently. So, uh, and it's supposed to be really good. So, uh, let's yeah. see. So it's on the move again. Yep, see you later. So, as we left Erashidia behind and continued on our journey through the dry and dusty land, it wasn't long before we stumbled across something quite spectacular. One thing about not doing a lot of planning is that you come across things that you weren't expecting. Mm, we definitely weren't expecting this, <laughs> were we? I don't know if the camera does it justice, I'm going to do a bit of close-up shots in a bit, but this is the Ziz Valley Oasis, an oasis in the middle oasis, of the yeah. desert. It's just, we've just driven, what, maybe half an hour or so yeah. from where we were last, and it was just flat desert plains, nothing to be seen. Well, it's rock really rather than just, sand, wasn't yeah. it? We're not quite at the Sahara yeah. yet. Yeah, and then all of a sudden we see this and uh, stop, there's a viewpoint here and it's just stunning. It's stunning, yeah. So I'm going to get some close, close ups and I think uh, a bit of video editing mag magicery will be um, achieved while we're talking. You can see the pictures in the background. <laughs> And there's some little fairy creatures down there, which I was far more interested in. Yeah. And uh, look like little chipmunks with um, stripy backs. And we've also, if you turn your backs, you can't see it here because we're a bit low, but I'll show you the Atlas Mountains in the background as well. So you can, you can see them, they stretch for hundreds of miles. They're quite impressive. So we'll help do a bit of editing and show you that on the top of this as well. Um, but yeah, it's amazing. The Ziz River winds through Erashidia, Urfoud and Risani creating a massive oasis. The region is known as the Tafilet, which Moroccans regard as the 17th century birthplace of the current dynasty ruling the country, the Alawites. It wasn't long, however, before the lush green oasis turned to dry, flat, arid plains, and the gigantic Erg Chebi sand dunes rising from the Sahara Desert became visible on the horizon. Bastard! Oh, Jesus! 